brought to you by Squarespace. In the year 1972, the Soviet Design Bureau, MIL, embarked on an ambitious journey. The goal? A tilt rotor aircraft to replace the Mi-8 in the future. Experience with their own work on the Mi V12 and inspired by Karmov designs, the idea was pretty straightforward. But as we know today with aviation projects, ideas is often not enough. Let's go see why the Soviet offspray never took to the skies. Ever since World War II, this one concept has been very intriguing for the engineers on both sides of the Iron Curtain. That is, building a very fast helicopter or the equivalent VTOL transport plane. And you know that it was the Nazis that actually tried first, but that's a topic for another day. The British built their famous Farley Rotodyne and the Soviet Karmov Bureau built the Kar-22, but the Americans had a different concept. Unlike the two pair of engines for vertical and horizontal movement, a concept that both the British and Soviets explored, Bell created a tilt rotor aircraft called the XV-3 in 1955. It would have the ability to take off like a helicopter and then rotate to become a plane. Jump forward a bit and we're now in the 70s and where our mill story starts. Watching this, you're likely wondering, boy, Nick, that looks identical to the American V-22. And that's a great point, but you can't blame America for not knowing that this helicopter had been designed before, well, because the Soviets didn't have a website. But Squarespace is here to help, today's video sponsor. That's right, if you're launching a new airframe or just need a new website, then Squarespace is the best website builder out there. They have plenty of great templates, or you can have a go building your own design with their powerful code-free builder. They even have built-in e-commerce tech to add products and start selling right away, inbuilt email campaign marketing tools that are easy to use, and their sites are already optimized for mobile phones. Plus, when you click that link, you're actually supporting the channel by helping fund the animations and videos that you love so much, so it's win-win. To get it, simply go to www.squarespace.com found and get 10% off your first site and domain. Even if you don't need a website today, maybe you know somebody who does. So don't be a Soviet, be a supporter of the channel instead and click that link when you need a website. Back to the show. After their attempts with the gyrodyne and the hybrid helicopter concepts like the Mi V-12, the Soviet spies went over to Bell for, let's say, inspiration on this new project. This time, their transport helicopter project would base its design on the tilt rotor engine concept. So how exactly does this work? Well, to put simply, during the takeoff, the engines would be tilted upwards and the aircraft would be controlled similar to a tandem rotor helicopter. After gaining altitude, however, the engines would rotate into a horizontal position and the aircraft would then have transport aeroplane performance in terms of speed. For example, the Mi-8 would fly at around 220 km per hour with a maximum speed at 250 km per hour. In comparison, the Mi-30 projected top speed was somewhere between 500 and 600 km per hour, a significant increase over the traditional helicopter. To put this in an even greater perspective, the V-22 Offspray's top speed stands at around 509 km per hour. And the Kar-22, the previous Soviet gyrodyne project, achieved a class record speed of only 356. So you can understand why this tilt rotor concept was so interesting and so exciting for the Soviets. With the main idea behind this concept ready, the Mill Bureau got the TSAGI behind them and started work on the project. And as we previously mentioned, the goal of this project was to replace the existing Mi-8s. But greed and unrealistic requirements would prove to be the roadblock on this project very soon. 
As this aircraft was supposed to be greater than the Mi-8, it was important that they had a good starting off point with the original. The Mi-8, the ultimate workhorse for the Soviet and Russian Air Force, among with other numerous other countries in its base variant, had a capacity of 24 people and 4 tons of cargo. The Mi-8 was then seen as a downgrade, only carrying 19 passengers and 2 tons of cargo. Slightly less than the helicopter it was set to replace, but with a much greater speed as a payoff. Test radio controlled aircraft were made and the develop was well on its way when the government included an additional requirement. They needed 32 passengers and up to 5 tons of cargo. This was a hard hit on the mill engineers and they quickly had to come up with a solution so not to lose funding. Instead of two engines, now there would be three Kilmov TV3117F engines, the same ones that were used on the Mi-28 down the line. This would give it a total weight of the aircraft that was moved from around 10 to 15 and a half tons. But just when they thought that they could finally put it off and bring this aircraft into reality, Moscow once again issued new requirements. Now, you need some background information to understand what exactly was going on in Moscow at the time. In the early 1980s, the Mi-30 project would end up being defended in front of a commission from the Ministry of Defense, who would not issue them their funding unless this one requirement was included in the development. By this time, the war in Afghanistan had heated up for the Soviets and they understood how dangerous it was to fly a helicopter in the mountainous regions of Afghanistan, especially with the enemy being given stingers by the Americans and their helicopters being relatively slow and easy to shoot down. Having a multi-engine fast aircraft that doesn't require an airfield would be the best possible solution to save lives of troops and ease resupplying of bases and posts scattered in the harsh mountainous environment. On the other hand, this would have been the perfect aircraft for the airborne forces, the VDV which was deployed in Afghanistan in large numbers. So what exactly was this development problem that we mentioned? Well, the government wanted a two-engine aircraft, not this new three-engine one. So once again, it was back to the drawing boards. To fix this problem, the engineers went with two massive D136 engines, which were powering the beast called the Mi-26, the largest production helicopter in the world, and now these engines would be used for the Mi-30 because they were the only ones big enough to be suitable for this type of aircraft. However, massive engines meant everything else would become, well, massive. This means that the weight of the aircraft was brought up to a further 30 tons. Remember, this was three times the original requirement and almost two times the weight of the V-22 Offspray. With this third and final design change, the project was finally granted funding and Mill got to work at building this new monster helicopter. Unfortunately, something else happened in 1991. By the early 90s, the Mill Bureau had finally had the project sorted out and with all the experience they had gathered through the years, they proposed three finalized designs for the government to choose for further development and serial production. 11, 20, and a 30-ton variant. But by then, the Soviet Union ceased to exist, and with it, the project died as well. 20 years of development went down the drain, while at the same time, the US went into serial production with their own V-22. And you can totally imagine what it was like for the Soviet engineers to see this. Their unfulfilled dream flying in the West and not in Soviet skies, just because the government couldn't sort themselves out and define the project requirements. Another thing to mention is just how the V-22 development was bumpy and how the aircraft even today isn't considered as the safest one. So would this project even make it into serial production in the USSR, even if they got the green light in time? I guess the moral of the story is, you can't please everyone, and certainly not the Soviet government. Hope you enjoyed this interesting story of one of the coolest looking aircraft designed by Mill. See you in the next video.